before you reach for that bottle of mouthwash or yes, even certain toothpaste, consider this. Almost all oral hygiene products on the market today are actually killing off the good bacteria of your oral microbiome. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, we've been talking off camera and I've gotten to know you a bit. Can you, can you share with everybody your background? Because it's, it's fascinating and I think uh, people understanding where you're from, what you went through, your success story and how you, you know, live in the dream or not live in the dream, I think is really important. So go ahead. So uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity, Dr. Gundry. Uh, I actually am from New Delhi, India originally. I grew up in a toothbrush manufacturing uh, family. We, we, my father and my brothers make toothbrushes for a living. Uh, toothbrushes for multinational corporations, including the most famous names in the world. But like any Indian dad, my dad wanted me to study medicine and uh, wanted me to, uh, in India, it's either you got to be an engineer or a doctor or something uh, to kind of com be a complete son. So I went to uh, school in India and Russia and uh, uh, things were not really socioeconomically right in Russia. So I moved to the United States um, and I started Dr. Fresh, uh, the original company, which I sold uh, early on in 2012. And uh, I'm a true American dream living liver or American, uh, I lived an American dream. Um, I uh, knew very quickly that if I want to be successful, I need to innovate and bring my products. So I innovated a lot of uh, products. I had 58 patents in my old company which I sold um, and uh, at that point I uh, thought um, at the end of 2010 approximately 2009 uh, while I'd achieved a lot of success I'd also <clears throat> messed up a lot of my body. I forgot the basic principles of medicine. I was eating a lot of junk food at a fast food restaurants. I was working 12, 14 hours, sitting down at my desk, not moving. I was drinking sodas. I thought this is the American way. I kind of got influenced. I left what I grew up with and I kind of overly got overly Americanized. Like, you know how somebody gets into something new and they get like overly uh, um, um, Americanized. So where I was literally uh, I had grown to over 200 pounds. I started on a lot of pharmaceutical medic medications, uh, almost 14 pills a day uh, to treat every possible lifestyle disorder you can get at a very early age in life. And um, I one day woke up and uh, I had a wake up call actually, which was an anxiety attack, which the doctor thought initially when I went to the ER that it's a heart attack or something. And I was 39 at that time. Mm. And uh, that is when I realized uh, one, of, one of my friends, all my friends, all my classmates are doctors, either in America or in India. And he said, hey, do you know the king of uh, Sudan? I said, no, <laughs> I don't know. He said, if you don't know him, he spent all his life becoming the king. Well, who the hell cares about you? You need to just take care of yourself and go back to your roots. So, I actually sold the business, I took a year off and I uh, cleansed my whole body by uh, doing the mindful things. I started eating very mindfully. Whatever I put in my temple uh, is very important. Um, so I want to eat everything. Literally I was looking through your book and practically I, this book is all about an Indian sect called Jain. It's practically the Jain diet where you refute a lot of, even because you don't like tomatoes and you don't like things that grow in the, under the ground or something, exactly that diet. And I'm very impressed because that diet has been around for thousands of years. And that's a very special clan that lives for a long life and uh, they have longer lives and they really do a good job in maintaining their um, system. 
So I went on kind of like similar kind of a diet, basically eating everything in moderation. I believe everything in moderation, including moderation. So <laughs> th that said, um, I also started doing yoga every day, which, and I learned yoga. I became a certified yoga instructor, double certified in US and India. I, I started um, really focusing on yoga and uh, walking every day and making sure I live healthy. I lost almost 35, 40 pounds at that point, And I literally lost every medication, uh, all 14 pills uh, for, for quite some time. I just started on one lately, but apart from that, literally lost everything. And, and um, I, I feel everybody can do it uh, if they really focus and make it a point to do it right. And uh, it's, it's a product of choice, not of reason. I know we live in a society where um, there is, it's a society of abundance because people in certain countries they don't have uh, abundance and uh, here we have abundance because whenever we go to uh, Beverly Hills to a restaurant, there's like menu full of 20 delicious things and you're like, how much can I eat? So um, it's all about the choice that you make. And uh, once you be mindful of those choices, you start to become better, I, I feel. Well, I think you said something important that I say all the time. Uh, which is um, a very important point in Ayurvedic medicine in that this is your temple. And I always say, look, this is the only house you're ever going to live in. This is it. Um, maybe we'll come back. Um, I'm coming back as one of my dogs uh, if I come back. But you're right. This is the temple. This is it. If we spend as much attention, time, money, on taking care of this temple, this house that we do, taking care of our car, taking care of our clothes, and incidentally, you look fabulous today, uh, and our actual, you know, the house that we, we live in, it, it's amazing what can happen if we just put that attention there. Absolutely. It's, it doesn't take a lot of time. It's all about mindfulness. It's just about paying attention. That's all. Yeah, so I think, you know, I wanted you to tell that story because it's so important. I mean, you, you were living the American dream in the best way and the worst way, and it came back to bite you. Um, so, you know, good for you to, to recognize that. And, and a lot of times it's, it's this one episode uh, that, you know, change, it, it, it's almost in addiction, you, you obviously have to hit rock bottom um, to, you know. I wish your listeners actually don't have to hit the rock bottom and learn from other people's mistake like my mistake and take care of it before they hit the rock bottom because sometimes you never come out of the rock bottom. Not everybody's that lucky. I was that lucky that I could come out of it, but not everybody is. So I would suggest... Uh, take this with a grain of salt and start doing the right thing today. I mentioned uh, Ayurvedic, uh, and you're an Ayurvedic practitioner. I actually don't practice Ayurveda, uh, but I, I have learned Ayurveda, I've learned yoga, and I've learned medicine, uh, your regular Western medicine. Uh, so I, uh, but I have learned Ayurveda, but I don't practice on day to day. I'm running a business day to day. And so, yeah, and so let's talk about your business because my, uh, my wife is a huge fan uh, and uh, when she's listening to this, and, and we're going to get into my wife's practice in a second. So tell me about Guru Nanda and the oral microbiome. What's the three pillars that you set up for this? So first, of the, for the name Guru Nanda, a lot of people think it's a strange name, and so guru in Indian language, I'm from India, guru in Indian language means teacher. And uh, my name is Puneet Nanda. Uh, Puneet means pure, Ananda basically is a bliss. So pure bliss was kind of my, uh, the meaning of my name. Nice. But uh, so I call it Guru Nanda was the name of my yoga studio. And 
which I opened after selling the company. I, I just wanted to selfishly take care of myself more than anything else. And, and I thought if I'm in this business of yoga, then I practically will keep doing it, teaching others and learning myself and doing myself every day. But uh, then I realized uh, that a lot of young women uh, who were buying essential oils uh, from uh, companies like doTERRA and Young Living, which are multi-level marketing companies, which are great products, uh, were using them very often and successfully. And uh, one of the oils actually changed my thought about it because I wasn't uh, initially a believer because I always believed in Western science. Um, but then I, uh, oregano oil, because I used to have a lot of allergies, I would sneeze 50 to 100 times a day. That oregano oil changed my view about essential oils. And that is when I literally got inspired by the supplies, uh, how the supply system works from farm to bottle. And I replicated that supply system, but for retail where I cut out all the middleman. And my whole idea was I'd made my American dream come true with my first company sale. I want to do something for people so that I can bridge the gap. Everything I do today is to bridge the gap. I want to bring whole food kind of products to a, a smaller discount store like a Dollar Tree or a Big Lots or a Walmart of the world so that I can reach the masses with natural high quality products because most of the people who actually sell really high quality products sell them at Whole Foods. They never, and they mark them at 90% uh, or 100, like literally triple the prices. Versus then there are a lot of products that call themselves coconut oil, but if you look on the label behind, the first ingredient is mineral oil. There is, and if you read the whole thing, the last ingredient on the list is uh, coconut oil. So practically they are selling and but they're calling it coconut oil. Then there's a lot of air freshener cans that you look at big stores, uh, even big stores and they say with made with essential oils. You, you put it under a GC test, G, gas chromatography test, there is 0.1% uh, real essential oils. All they do is they are using chemicals, all sort of chemicals that some of them fall under carcinogenic lists even, and putting a drop of essential oil and calling them essential oils. So that is what is going on. It's the marketing gimmick. So people need to be aware, uh, either you are in this camp or you are in this camp. You can't have fragrance product and one ingredient being essential oil. And then there are certain companies who are selling online that just write everything fake. So it's very hard because there is no particular monogram. So it's very hard to differentiate between the companies, which is making a lot of people um, not be happy with some of the products that there are in the market. Well, you know, we've never talked about essential oils uh, on my podcast. And a lot of my listeners may not, may, certainly have heard of them, uh, but may not know, okay, what the, what the heck do you do with them? Do you smell them? Uh, do you put a drop on your forehead to relieve your migraine? Do you put it under your tongue? Do you drink a bottle of essential oil? How did you use oil of oregano? And I'm a big fan of oil of oregano, the real stuff. How did you use it and to turn around your allergies? So I actually would tell you, I was in Greece at a distillery and I was in a business meeting. I had forgotten all my regimen of uh, steroids and claritins of the world. And uh, I wouldn't say names. I'd forgotten the regimen of steroids and citrazine, dihydrochloride kind of yeah. brand name products. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I realized I was sneezing like crazy 100 times in that distillery. And that old man, 94-year-old guy, walked up to me and said, you're in bad shape. He was the dad of that distiller and he said, what if I gave you a couple of drops of oregano oil? And he put a few drops, of, a couple of drops of oregano oil in a 16 ounce bottle, shook it up and gave it to me and told me to chuck the whole thing in. I said, okay, I did it. Afternoon, I did it again. And when we went out to dinner, I did it back again next day morning. 
I was going to take medication, but I literally forgot because I did not sneeze and I was like shocked. I said, how in the world could this happen? Because I'd gone to every major doctors in Cedars, UCLA, Mayo, and nothing was helping me. And, and this was all gone. And I, I, I thought this could be a fluke. So I tried it a few times. And any time I would get that bout of sneezing, I'd do that and it would go away. So it may not work for everybody. I think essential oils is not a pure science. It's like our four or five fingers are not the same. Nothing is going to work for every, everybody. So you have to hit and try. Number one. Number two, you shouldn't drink oils like I did because that's that could harm your lit, kidneys and liver. And even if you are doing it, you have to do it on oils like which are already something that you put, like oregano you put on your pizza. Peppermint, you actually eat peppermint chewing gum or something like that. So you know that these are okay. But then there are certain oils like that you never ingest or never take because they have... They are not that, uh, they could poison your, they could harm your liver really bad or you harm, harm your kidney. So ingestion is something I don't promote. Uh, using it on skin. So these oils, essential oils, have a very, uh, they are more vapor uh, oils. They are volatile components, basically. And these volatile components, if they are added to a carrier oil, a fatty oil, you can use it on skin if the dilution is at least no more than between 2 to 5%. So if 2 to 5% of essential oil is mixed with a fatty oil like olive oil, which you, you lo like which and love, I've seen in, in your book, um, that is a great uh, carrier oil. You use olive oil, add a couple of drops of, let's say, uh, a lavender oil, and rub it on your temples, your feet before you sleep at night. And if you do it for another... 21 days minimum, uh, use some olive oil, add 5% lavender, rub it on your feet. You'll have a great night's sleep and you'll see that within uh, 21 days, your sleep cycle will start to improve by at least about 15 minutes to an hour. And I have experienced it myself. And these oils have been tested. If you look at lavender, the main three components are linalool, linalyl acetate, and levindula acetate. And linalool has been used in a lot of actual medications to actually give, get you de-stressed and get you better sleep and stuff like that. So they extract parts of the biocomponents of the oil and use it everywhere. Same with peppermint. Peppermint has menthol in it, and menthol is being used in your tiger bombs of the world and your other things of uh, that that actually give you hot and icy hearts of the world. Yeah. So all these uh, components is where, all these essential oils is where some of these bio components are extracted, isolated and used so that uh, the companies can actually use uh, to make a specific product so that they can actually mark it up. Interesting. All right, so that's essential oils. Thank you for explaining that. Uh, now let's talk about the oral microbiome, which we kind of introduce this podcast with. Um, most people who follow my podcast know how important our gut microbiome. I, in my books, talk about the holobiome, which is not just the gut microbiome, but the oral microbiome, the skin microbiome. And most of us uh, know, I hope, that we actually have a microbiome that floats around us in, in space. Uh, and that one kind of fun thing is that there's a theory that I like that personal space is where my holobiome meets your holobiome, and that's the spot that we interact. I absolutely think you are on to something right because uh, number one, uh, when you look at it, microbiomes are what actually are, are your fighter cells, for fighter products, fight fighters for you. Microbiomes are your fighters. Yep. And um, as you focus on gut, uh, the gut really starts from your mouth because every, the digestive system starts here. 
because you start salivating, you start actually digestion right here. So if your mouth, if you're using like in the 70s, there was a mouthwash that came out with a tagline saying, if you don't burn, it doesn't work. So a lot of people who were in the World War II era, grown up, gone to the military schools, they thought they're going to be macho man or macho woman by using something that is going to burn. So, uh, and then no pain, no gain was the main thing. So in India, there was one, one toothbrush company that had come out with uh, a slogan where they said, if you don't bleed, that means you're not taking off the bad <laughs> germs Whoa. out of your mouth. So there were unscrupulous kind of things going on early in the day. Then there's another company that saw an opportunity, came out with a cetylpredium chloride product, CPC they call it. And cetylpredium chloride is another antimicrobial agent. So they came out with a tagline saying, uh, all the benefits without the burn. But both of the things did the same, 99.9% .9 of the bacteria was eradicated. Now, uh, it's almost like, uh, let's say if you had four bad guys in Los Angeles, you go and bomb entire New North Los Angeles and nuke it all out, you'll get kill a lot of talent also. And 98% of the bacteria in the mouth are good bacteria. It's just a couple of point bacteria that are not good. Like certain bacteria like streptococcus mutants, the bacteria that actually actually cause cavities, um, they also uh, keep in check if your good bacteria is around, means otherwise they'll have a field day. So having a healthy micro, microbiome is like having a healthy society. So keeping, keeping the bad guys handcuffed in jails and keeping the good guys flourishing, that's what a good uh, society does and that's what you need to do with healthy microbiomes. All right, so the question is how do you keep the healthy guys happy? What, what, what do you do? So first of all, don't kill them. Good advice. So whenever you uh, go and kill the good guys, there'll be uh, bad guys. One is equal to 10 good guys. So they'll start to rule. That's how it works in the world. And uh, what I would do is don't kill the uh, everything in vicinity. By, uh, when I talk about uh, oil pulling, oil pulling has been around for hundreds and thousands of years in Indian Ayurveda. And uh, what oil pulling does is it actually, uh, oil by inherent nature goes and seeps everywhere. And our uh, bacteria are mostly as a way to protect themselves. Like as humans, we form our own huts and we live behind the hut. If there is a storm, we go inside the hut, something like that. And bad bacteria, they keep forming biofilms and they tend to live behind them. Biofilm on top of biofilm on top of biofilm is plaque. And when you wake up in the morning, let's say you take a little dry brush as experiment, don't do it. Uh, every day, but as experiment, uh, wet it. And when you take off the, uh, just brush it dry, you'll see that white sticky substance come out. That's plaque. Now, imagine if you did not have a good oral hygiene and you mechanically don't remove it because you're not brushing, what would happen? You, you would actually have calcified plaque, which becomes tartar. And then you'll have to go to a dentist clinic and get the cleaning done and literally remove break all the plaque because behind the plaque is residing maybe the streptococcus mutant that is going to go and form cavities. Now you have to go to a dentist where he has to drill and bill you. And, and in case uh, you're, you're taking care of good hygiene, I don't want dentists out of business because there's nothing that replaces them. Uh, it is very important to get yourself checked up. But uh, what, what I mean to say is a healthy hygiene in your mouth leads to a healthy body overall. And um, I, I think if you're not taking off your mouth, you're not taking care of your entire body. Because this is where everything begins. No, you're right. Um, in fact, you can, you can really expand on that. Um, 
uh, Dr. Dale Bradison, who wrote The End of Alzheimer's, and I have become good friends. And, you know, he and others are uh, convinced that one of the many causes of dementia and Alzheimer's is the mouth has, has got a direct shot to the brain. It's really only, you know, an inch away. And that these mouth flora, the bad guys, have access to the brain. And it's this access that uh, causes this. Now, you mentioned that these bacteria form biofilms and actually make huts. Um, I actually call them igloos because there is some evidence that some of these oral flora get into our bloodstream and that when people get a coronary calcium scan of their coronary arteries, though there's only really two things that can make calcium in our body. One are bone-making cells, and the other is actually the bacteria in our mouth that form tartar. That's calcium. And there's an interesting theory that I like, that these bacteria, the calcium that we see in the blood vessels, are actually these biofilms that are calcified. They're little igloos to protect these bacteria. And there's one interesting study where people were given a, a mild antibiotic, tetracycline, for six months, along with some other nutritional support, and there was dramatic reversal of the coronary calcium in their blood vessels. The study's only been done once. But I think your point I applaud is that there is so much important stuff going on in our mouth and we just neglect it. So three kind of major mouthwashes are there. One with alcohol uh, in the market. There's one with cetylpredium chloride. Then the third one, most famous one, is with sodium fluoride. And uh, what the oil pulling is very different. It's a pre-brush regimen. It's not post-brush. For post-brushing, I've actually made a product called concentrated mouthwash. And this is more about sustainability and natural essential oils. And I'll come to that. But what oil pulling does is when you're oil pulling, you're actually seeping in between the biofilms. You're loosening them up. When you loosen up the biofilms and when you brush with them, you can actually eradicate all those biofilms in a much better way. Now, when the electric toothbrushes became popular, the reason was because your own saliva was being used as micro bullets to go and mechanically injure the biofilms so that the biofilms are loosened up and they can be removed better. And with oil pulling, you're practically doing the same thing with more subtle way and so the reason oil pulling name came in existence is because they basically pull all the bad bacteria behind the biofilms and loosen up the biofilms so that you can flush out their living spaces so that you can have paved way for healthy microbiome to uh, exist. And uh, with this oil pulling, since it has the bases, could be coconut oil or sesame oil, we have one with coconut oil base which is a little bit more Americanized version because it tastes a lot better. But then there is this Ayurvedic version, which is the advanced <coughs> oil pulling or the original one. So these are with sesame oil in them. And this is how it was written in the Ayurvedic text. And this has a little bit more, not just oral health, it is also uh, supposed to ha help detox your, your entire body. And uh, there is a science behind it because uh, according to Ayurveda, the body works on pure system. Uh, pure system is uh, P for perspiration, um, U for urination, uh, R for respiration, and E for excretion. Whatever you uh, take out through excretion, uh, most of your majority of your toxins in your body that you're eating preservatives all day long, your body is very smart, it's going to take it out and that's excretion. Uh, urination is another quick way you eat like bunch load of, I saw one woman eating like 13 vitamins in the morning, 13 in the afternoon, 13 at night. She is peeing ex very expensive pee because <laughs> and now that's not required uh, to put in your also sometimes overloading your essential organs like kidney. And urination is another one. And then 
respiration is when you sweat, you go and heat sauna, you kind of detox your body. That's your body's way to respire. Or if you go to a gym, you sweat it out. That's your body's way to uh, get rid of your toxins. And uh, you, um, the last one is respiration, which is when you breathe, deep breathe, that's all about yoga. When you deep breathe, your oxygen actually goes all the way to your peripheries of your body, your hands, your feet, and your oxygen. Uh, and there are ways called pranayama where when you deep breathe in certain ways, it actually, the oxygen permeates your cell membrane, goes into the cell, metabolic activity takes place, and the carbon dioxide is spit out. So cell repair starts to take place at the peripheries of the body by deep breathing, and you detox when you metabolize better. So your metabolic activity increases. So deep breathing is another pr thing. People may, un this is probably the most underrated thing in the world because if you deep breathe, simple deep breathing, if you deep breathe every day, uh, very cautiously, you're actually increasing your metabolism, you're actually uh, improving your health subconsciously. So with uh, coming back to oil pulling, um, I will tell you some incidents of my own. So in 2012, when I sold my company as going to India, I was uh, having an infection on my tooth and the doctors gave me antibiotics. He said, you need to uh, get the inflammation down and uh, it's, uh, your x-rays don't look good. Maybe we might have to, when you come back from your trip, we might have to do a root canal on it. And I was like petrified because uh, it means, uh, I, I said, okay, um, means he's a very good friend of mine actually. And um, I said, okay. and. I went to India to this yoga ashram and uh, I was learning Ayurveda and this main head of the place, he sa I, I told him I have this problem and if it erupts back, there's no dental office in vicinity for 50, 100 miles. So what would happen? He put me on oil pulling, which has been traditionally been used in Ayurveda. And I was like, it felt yucky. And I said, well, I, I can't take the oil in my mouth, but I, I did it because it was the part of the whole routine. I started doing it, started doing it. It took me about a month, literally, to get used to it. I started it with 30 seconds, then a minute, then two minutes. And slowly I started to enjoy it. And after about a month, and it's been over 10 years now, um, I don't pull every day, but I pull at least four days, three, four days a week. I pull during my shower time. And and I am, I think this is one thing Till now, I have zero root canals, and I've been able to sustain that tooth that was really in a bad shape uh, up till now. I hope I can keep sustaining it. And simultaneously, I've had no other major issues in the mouth, which, uh, and I'm 55, so I'm, I'm basically been able to preserve pretty much uh, something that I, I wish I would have started it when I was 20 and I would have been on the same kind of regimen. I started pretty late in life, but still it's been of great preventive health, help to, for my dental health. So how long do you do it? So I personally do oil pulling on Saturday and Sunday for about 10 minutes a day. On normal days in the morning, I do it for the shower time. My shower time could be anywhere from three to six minutes, and I do it for the time of the shower. And uh, I do it, most days, but since we came out with this amazing product, uh, this is one of my favorite inventions of all time. And, really? Uh, yes. The reason I call it is because number one, uh, in big bottles of mouthwash, you have, uh, you won't realize, it's basically you're transporting water all across the country. Because in this big bottle of mouthwash, if it is a CPC mouthwash, 98% of the ingredient is water, aqua, nothing. So it's basically you're transporting water. Now, when you add water to all the stuff, you have to add a very robust preservative system because water can catch fungus, water can catch other problems if you are not preserving, preserving it really nice. So what you have to do is you have to add a lot of preservatives, but as you know, in the mouth, if you're adding, uh, if you're using a mouthwash, number one, it's antimicrobial, which is okay 
once in a while. But uh, then ap apart from that, you're adding in so many other chemicals that are there to preserve that water-based mouthwash. So we came up with this product. It, uh, it has got uh, very simple ingredients and uh, very simple preservative. Uh, it's less than 1% alcohol. And the, the most of the product is essential oil based. So the number one essential oils are for keeping your well-being of your breath. So peppermint oil, the real peppermint, because a lot of people, in, especially in even the big companies overseas, are using fake peppermint, uh, synthetic peppermint, to actually normalize the taste and normalize, standardize the production because peppermint oil is crop based, synthetic one is not. So, but in here it's the real peppermint oil, farm to table. And spearmint oil, cardamom oil, fennel oil. Cardamom is used in Indian tea and fennel yeah. is after Indian food you eat it to keep your digestive system and your breath in check. Yeah. And then there is tea tree oil that we bring from Australia or from South Africa, which is the Australian variety too. We have clove oil. Clove has been used by Indian dentists for years to ensure, this was uh, almost like a, uh, 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 in days when you did not have lidocaine and benzocaine and all that stuff, clove was the product of choice for a lot of dentists. Oregano oil, which I absolutely am in love with. And, but we put it very micro dosing because small is big when it comes to essential oils. People don't realize <clears throat> one drop of essential oil, let's say one drop of peppermint oil is equal to 28 cups of peppermint tea. Wow. It, because we use 4,000 kilos of rose petals to create one kilo of rose oil. The real rose oil is close to fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a kilo, versus you go and find the rose uh, oil on certain major website that everybody uses for twenty bucks. That's all fragrance. It's not rose essential oil. Interesting, right? So um, then we have also added vitamin D, E, and K two in in this. Apart from all these essential oils, there's one more product which I literally very heavily believe it's it's something called jasmine oil now why would jasmine do anything with dental because jasmine is the best possible product to keeping your minds calm and it is also a little bit of an aphrodisiac truthfully because uh, jasmine oil in olden days women used to wear jasmine flowers in their uh, uh, on their hair so that for the first night so the men get uh, uh, aroused by it. Now, what does it have to do with it? That little product, which is in microdose here, is probably more expensive than the whole bottle. But you'll have a feel good feeling after using it that you'll never have had. And when you use this essential oil, um, a base mouthwash, you put a few drops, four or five drops in a cup that comes along with it and add some water and goggle with it, swish it all around your mouth. It's almost like oil pulling in a way, but not really because it has water to it uh, and uh, it doesn't do the exact same job as this. But what these essential oils, because of their inherent property of being uh, kind of uh, being uh, used by your body as a plant food, so they are not enemies of the body, but simultaneously, because of their inherent antimicrobial properties, they go and abstain the bad guys from growing further while not harming the good guys. And that is how the whole process was developed. But I personally think this is unbelievable. Product is brand new. Um, we've put it in Walmart retail stores, maybe too early for uh, going to Walmart. I should have gone to Whole Foods and other places. The reason I went to Walmart is because I am not bothered about making money. My main thing is how do I get to the masses? How do I get the best product to the masses and bridge the gap? So that's my whole thesis of being. And then with this product, it's oil pulling, which also has the, uh, um, the more robust version, also has all these essential oils alongside the coconut oil. Yeah. 
so it helps. Well, my, you know, my, my wife Penny is, uh, is a skeptic about most things that I bring home. Um, people send me lots of things to try, um, and you have advertised on our pod podcast, so I brought some of this home. And she said, okay, you know, I'm gonna try that. And she is such a huge fan. She does this almost every day. And she will do it up to 20 minutes at a time. And yesterday, we were talking about this because she knew you were gonna be on the show. And uh, she said, I used to have to get my teeth whitened. And you know, you get those trays and everything. And she said, and she, oh, she opens her mouth, she says, look at my teeth. And I mean, they're pearly, gorgeous. She hasn't had teeth whitening, I don't know, five years. And then she said, let me see your teeth. And my teeth are not pearly white. Even though I went to the dentist for uh, cleaning about three weeks ago. And she said, that's what that's doing. So there's, um, you know, thank you so much. She's a huge fan and I can tell you at least one person, you, what you say, she can back up with. Uh, I'm looking at your teeth, actually your teeth have very tight contacts. Oh yes. I, while looking at your teeth. So because they are so tight, you probably uh, will benefit from it the most. Because a lot of people don't realize when they have tight contacts, they don't, it's hard to, for them to floss. Correct. And there is nothing, they, I always profess that, and this is an old saying, but I'm, I always profess that, you only floss the teeth you want to keep. And oil is probably this uh, uh, cocoment or one of the more advanced versions, if you can get used to the taste, is probably the best thing for somebody with tight contacts like yourself. Now, I don't know if you know that uh, only when I started working in this industry 28 years ago, only 11% of America flossed. Right now that has grown because earlier it used to be the spool floss, then came the uh, floss pick in the late 90, in the early 90s. And after floss pick came the soft pick where you could mm -hmm. probe between your teeth because there was a plastic covered with like soft rubber. And uh, then uh, there came the water flossers became cheaper, so more affordable for people to use it. I actually will tell you, if you use this concentrated mouthwash in your portable water flosser or water flosser, add a, a full uh, 3 ml, uh, like 1 ml of it into your water flosser and flo floss with it, you will feel like you had a car wash of your entire mouth. You would feel like a million bucks. I promise you that. This is an unbelievable product for that particular reason. And uh, I have been doing that, and I am personally become the biggest fan of my own product. Yeah. Yes. So it, it is unbelievable. Another thing I've been doing since I actually got in touch with you. So I am a big uh, proponent of having a healthy microbiome like yourself. So I've actually, I ordered one product of yours, the probiotic product, because I wanted to order one and see what is your products like. Uh, and uh, I'd heard of your podcast and I'd heard you at may several instances, but never really fully paid attention, unfortunately. Uh, and I, when I ordered these probiotics, I actually have been using that probiotic. I take out one capsule, I open it up and actually use it in the oil pull while I'm oil pulling on a Saturday or Sunday. So it gives me a little bit more time or actually I've been using it uh, while doing the concentrated mouthwash. Now, why do I use your product? Because it's in a capsule format. So whenever there are pressed tablets of probiotics, they may write a billion uh, bacteria available, good bacteria available, but by the time they heat press it, most of it is done. And at the end, when you check it, there is nothing left at, at the end of the shelf life. So I think that's a very good way to add probiotics to your regimen too. Well, thanks for the plug. We appreciate it. Yeah, you know, uh, years ago, uh, one, of our, one of our early products was actually uh, an oral microbiome little chew tab. And I, 
I was that impressed that we needed to work on the oral microbiome, but unfortunately no one bought it because no one really thinks about, you're right, this is where it all starts. This is where the microbiome starts. So folks, th this guy has been Mr. Dr. Mouth for his entire life. His family started in the mouth. Uh, he started in the mouth. And, you know, it's just great to have really someone who's devoted his entire career to, to the mouth here. I was reading uh, on McDonald's over a billion burgers sold. I've actually, between me and my family, we've sold over a billion toothbrushes. A billion? Over a billion. That's, that's a lot of toothbrushes. Yes. Toothbrushing really is, is kind of only the start is what I'm hearing from you. So toothbrushing, uh, there's a four brush, a four part regimen that I profess. First is oil pulling. And after oil pulling, it's brushing with a pea sized toothpaste. And after that, it is uh, flossing. And flossing could be with a water flosser or it could be with either of the flossing techniques that I talked to you were spool floss. And if you do it spool floss, you have to get into the gum line a little bit. Make sure you're actually using it to clean up your, the bad bacteria between the gum and the enamel, uh, the teeth and the gums. So that is very important. And then after that, uh, cooling it off with a concentrated mouthwash which is this product that actually works overnight to help you fight all the bad stuff. This oil pulling product comes with a, a tongue scraper inside for free. And uh, this is a very old Indian uh, Ayurvedic technique where you scrape your tongue so that you get rid of the plaque on your tongue. The reason that is important is because plaque formation is not just on the enamel of the gums. It is also on your tongue. And by this, you are mechanically removing that extra plaque while you are actually exposing your uh, taste buds so that when you taste, when you eat your food, your food uh, eating habits can change because now you can signal to your brain better if your taste buds are around that, okay, I'm full, stop, don't eat more. You're, you, and then you taste the, taste the food better your salivary system works better, so your digestion actually improves. So this is a this is mechanically actually helping uh, your entire gut uh, microbiome as well by actually doing tongue scraping. I I know a lot of people uh, means I was on a TV show once and uh, the woman thought this is some kind of a soda water. Yeah, it's a bottle opener. Opener, <laughs> but it is actually it comes free with it. I'm giving it free just because I want I people want you to, to actually do it use it. It's not about money making here. It's all about how do I get the right dental hygiene to the people. The, I'm American dream come true um, uh, in, as an entrepreneur and I want to give back by bringing good products to the people who can't afford it. Thank you. Appreciate that. One last thing, sesame oil. You mentioned it has a you know, strong Ayurvedic uh, tradition of healing. And in, in my last book, it turns out that sesame oil is actually one of the best oils to prevent these pieces of bacteria from getting through the bowel wall uh, called LPSs, lipopolysaccharides. And there's human studies that show two tablespoons of sesame oil per day actually dramatically lowers blood pressure in people who have high blood pressure. Uh, so. The, you know, so much of these traditional wisdom, we now have available tools to study why the traditional wisdom was correct. You know, nobody knew why it worked back then. They but, didn't have scientific data, but they used it for ages, generation to generation. And India is fortunately a four or five thousand plus years old society. Been around a while. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, sesame oil, if you look at Japan and India, are the two countries that use sesame oil the most. And uh, sesame oil, I agree with you, uh, but with oil pulling uh, in there, sesame oil has an inherent property of actually, because it's fatty, how 
our bodies work is whenever you're eating uh, processed food, for example, it is going and it is being going through your lymphatic system. Uh, it mm -hmm. should, but when your lymphatic system is overloaded, the all the uh, bad stuff, the, all the toxins, they get stored in your warehouse of your body, which is your fat cells. So you become it becomes fa toxic fat. So under your tongue, it's it's almost like a mechanism where you can pull. Uh, you can actually use the oil, sesame oil, and there is a, a doctor called Dr. Kul, Kulreet Chaudhary, who's a, a neurolo neurologist uh, and a, a Ayurvedic physician combined uh, in San Diego. She talked. She has done some work on it, and she's uh, talked about how sesame oil alongside some of these products are actually helpful by bringing out all the toxins from those fat cells uh, out while you're doing. So whatever you collect in your mouth after 10, 15 minutes is a lot of toxins out of your body as you do it slowly. So uh, that's another belief system in Ayurveda. Uh, not as much studied, but uh, that's traditional. When it comes to brushing, I do want to talk one quick thing. I've come up with a very unique brush. It's like butter on your gums. Because the number one problem with brushing has been people brush too hard. And as we age, gum recession takes place. And with this last two, three years of subconscious stress, uh, people don't realize they're actually brushing harder than normal. And the gum recession activity, I have a lot of dentists, friend. I have a 28,000 Rolodex of dentists. And I have seen, most of the dentists have seen, uh, number one, people didn't go to a dentist for a year. Number two, gum recession has been inherent because of the extra subconscious stress and because they've been brushing harder than normal. So I came up with these special bristles that are like butter to your gums and they are very special. More amazing episodes just like this one. Watch now. Human beings actually shrunk about a foot over 2,000 years when they started eating whole grain bread. 